Now, cartoons might show it differently, but mice are not actually that into cheese. This myth occurred during the Middle Ages. At that time, many foods rats and mice like way more than cheese were out of their reach. For example, people would store grains in jars or keep meat hanging. But cheese usually matured hidden in cupboards or shelves. Rats and mice could easily get to these spots. So people would usually find them there, eating not what they liked the best, but what was within their reach. Now, dogs don't see the world in black and white. They do distinguish colors, but not as well as we do. We have three types of cones in our eyes, while dogs only have two of those. Cones are special photoreceptors that help us perceive colors. Dogs can see certain colors, such as blue and yellow, better than the rest, and they can hardly see red and green. Dogs' mouths are by no means cleaner than humans. They have over 600 kinds of bacteria in their mouths, and their saliva doesn't have any healing properties. They don't sweat through their tongues either. When dogs pant, their tongues hang out, so people think that's how they sweat. But in reality, most sweat glands are on their paw pads and all over their body. They pant to evaporate extra moisture from their nasal passages, tongues, and the lining of their lungs. Panting is also another way to cool down. Opossums have some pretty cool abilities. They have a good memory and immunity to most snakes' venom. They're also very social. But contrary to popular belief, they don't sleep while hanging by their tails. These animals have strong tails, true, and it makes them excellent climbers. But they don't have the necessary muscle structure to hold such a position for a long time. Now, bats are not blind. They are nocturnal animals and might not see well during the day, but their vision is three times better than ours during the night. They do lack color receptors, but people can't see colors in low light either. Bats also use echolocation, which is locating things by the sound waves they reflect to detect small insects in the air. Chameleons have the ability to change the colors on their body. But they don't do it just to blend in with their surroundings. They do it to communicate with others of their kind or to regulate the body temperature, not to camouflage themselves. When these animals are in their natural state, they mostly resemble branches or leaves. Now, it sure looks like it, but rhino horns aren't made of bone. They're made of keratin, the same material you can find in your fingernails and hair. A horn is not attached to the rhino's skull. Instead, it's like a very, very compacted mass of hair. It grows throughout the rhino's lifetime, just like our nails and hair. The horn also looks like something a rhino can use for its defense, but that's not always the case. Some animals use their teeth to protect themselves against their enemies. No wonder the teeth on their lower jaws are so sharp. If you press the snooze button in the morning, you're not actually going to get those extra 10 minutes of sleep. It sure feels good to postpone getting up and staying in the warm bed at that moment. But the snooze button makes you feel more tired instead of providing you with extra rest. You see, your brain believes it's going to fall asleep again, which is why it will get harder and harder for you to get up when the alarm rings for the second or fifth time. In the long run, the snooze button may mess with your ability to get high-quality deep sleep. Now, when you mention desserts, I always think of chocolate. Oh wait, I did a boo-boo. Let's start that again. When you mention deserts, most people picture endless sandy areas, hot and dry. But you should define deserts not by temperatures, but by a lack of precipitation. Most of the well-known deserts across the world are indeed hot, but some are extremely cold. For example, there are polar deserts in northern Greenland. Um, can we talk about chocolate some more? No? Okay. Well, here's another one. Lightning won't strike the same place twice. Mm, Not really. In fact, lightning can and often does strike the same spot repeatedly. So if you get caught in a thunderstorm, better look around. Instead of hiding in the place already struck by lightning, try to find some shelter and avoid touching anything metal. You won't see an owl turning its head a full 360 degrees, even though it may look like the bird is doing it. Instead of eyeballs, owls have eye tubes. These tubes go far back into their skulls. In other words, owls have their eyes fixed in place. That's why they have to turn their heads when they want to see what's going on around them. They can't make a full circle with their necks, but they come very close, 270 degrees, which is three-quarters of a full rotation. (laughs) Not bad. 
Cats don't only purr when they feel content and happy. They can also do it if they're sick, scared, or even angry. <clears throat> Despite all stereotypes, these felines don't gracefully land on their feet every time they fall. True, they do have the so-called writing reflex. A cat has a vestibular apparatus inside its inner ear, which is the natural balancing system the animal uses to orient itself. With the help of this system, a cat can quickly figure out how to rotate its head so that the body can follow. In the end, the animal lands on its feet, but this reflex doesn't work every time. Elephants don't use their trunks as a drinking straw. When an elephant is thirsty, it pulls some water into its trunk, then brings it to its mouth and funnels the water inside. In other words, when these animals drink water, it doesn't go through their trunks, the same as people don't drink through their noses. Well, most people. Elephants have huge ears, but they can also listen with their feet. When they want to examine some faraway noise, elephants freeze and lean forward so that most of their weight is on their front legs. Sometimes they even lift one of their front feet. They rely on seismic communication, which means they detect sound waves that travel not through the air, but through the ground. There are many myths about your brain, like its right part is creative and the left one is logical. But your brain doesn't work this way. It's not strictly divided into parts that exclusively cover only one area, like logic or creativity or something else. Actions you take and things you go through are the results of the activity of your entire brain. The cerebral cortex is the part of your brain that consists of two halves. But both of them are connected to many other areas that make up the rest of the brain. So no neurons in the left part of your brain will turn you into a computer whiz. And those in the right half won't turn you into a poet. Now you may think your brain shuts off when you fall asleep, but it doesn't. It has slow activity rates when you're in a deep sleep and becomes more active when you're dreaming. During this stage, your brain's activity is almost the same as it is when you're fully awake. Now, not to freak you out, but you don't see with your eyes, hear with your ears, or feel with your skin. For example, you're washing your face, but your skin itself doesn't have sensors for wetness. Your brain uses a combination of multiple sources of information, including temperature, touch, or your earlier experience. That's why you feel that your face is wet. Your brain creates that sensation after analyzing all kinds of different information. Your brain doesn't actually react to things going on around you. It may seem like that. You see a cute little puppy, and it makes you smile. Your friend makes some silly joke, and you blush. But neurons in your brain don't just wait until something happens to react to that. Instead, they're trying to guess what might happen next all the time. Your brain starts analyzing your actions and the experiences you've gone through even before it gets data from your ears, nose, eyes, and other organs. Your brain is always working to predict what the world will be like in the next moment and what you will do in this world. So even though you're not actually reacting to the world, this process of prediction is happening so effortlessly and quickly that you feel like you do. Moving on, Jupiter doesn't technically orbit the Sun. When a smaller and less massive space object circles a bigger one, it doesn't travel in a perfect circle. Instead, both of these objects follow their respective elliptical orbits around a barycenter, which is their common center of gravity. Earth is way smaller than the Sun. That's why the barycenter it shares with our star is really close to the center of the Sun. That's why we can't see that our planet's orbit is a little bit off-kilter. But Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system. Its weight is more than twice as great as that of the rest of the planets, asteroids, moons, and comets combined. That's why the barycenter of Jupiter and the Sun is a little further from the star's center, around 30,000 miles above the surface. Okay, can we go back to the chocolate? Well, maybe next time.